Deanne already mentioned, I think she's got it up there, John 3, 16. It is really one of the most recognizable and memorized scriptures, whether somebody knows the Lord or not. Pretty much everybody knows John uh, 3, 16, or they can quote it at least parts of it, and, and they may not even know the Lord, but here's the wonderful thing about John 3, 16. If you've got that, you've got the gospel. If you've got that, you've got the complete gospel, and here's what the Bible says about the gospel. The gospel, the Bible says the gospel is the power of God. So John 3, 3 16 just tells us what God's dream is what his vision is, what his mission is when he created the world. It's his cause, it's his cost, it's his uh, condition, it's his outcome of what he intends for the men and the women of the earth, for God so loved the world. That was, a, that was his cause. For God so loved the world. And Deanne did a wonderful job of telling us about the love of God. What makes God God? Love. For God so loved the world. That was his cause. That was the entire cause for this mission. That he gave his only son. That's what it cost him. That is the price that he paid because he loved uh, this world, that whosoever believes in him, that is the only condition there is for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the outcome of believing. He is, he's paid, he, this is his cost, this is his cause. This is the, con it's simply to believe. Say believe. believe. Say I believe. I believe. I believe. And if I believe, then I have everlasting life. That's the outcome of it. But I found out several years ago that the Greek translates that scripture, for God so loved the world. You know how there's like the, what's that Bible that you the mirror bible and then I, i'm going to show you no it's the message bible and then i'm going to pull something out of the passion and you know i'm the king james queen of the deal but i pulled out that passion bible good lord but here's here's how the greek translates that scripture everything is the same except for two words for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever would believe would have everlasting life. And so the Greek transcribes it. Instead of everlasting life, it says life eternal. Here's the, dif here's the difference. Everlasting life means when I die, I go to heaven. That's how I got saved. I got saved when I was four. They said, do you want, it was on a Wednesday night, do you want to live with Jesus forever? Well, of course I did. I'm four, I, and I've been in church since day one and so of course I wanted to and so and I didn't understand dying I didn't understand and they didn't even talk about that you just want to be with Jesus uh, for forever and of course I did so everlasting life means we understand when I die I'm gonna go to heaven but life eternal is life here on this earth Life eternal, the capacity to live. Deanne already put it up there. He's given us everything that we need for life and godliness. That's life eternal, the capacity to live life to its fullest. Tell your neighbor, I need some help there. Having everything to live life all the way, just all the way. All the strength, all the power, all the refreshing, all of the pleasure, all of the encouragement, all of the enjoyment. It also means ample room. I don't want to live boxed in. I don't want to live trapped. I don't want to live limited. I don't want to feel like I'm insignificant and can't move out of this box. That's life eternal. God was so moved by his cause. For God so loved the world. That what makes God God? Love makes God God. God was so moved by his cause that he paid the cost. 
the cost. He didn't give his, listen, he didn't give his son so you and I would be boxed in. He didn't give his son so we would have just a little bit of healing, a little bit of joy, a little bit of hope, a little bit of fulfillment. He gave Jesus so that we would have life eternal, more than enough of all of those things. God determined the cost. So the results would be eternal. And the reason that I know that this is life in this earth dimension is because eternal is chronos. Chronos is time, past, present, future. And there is no chronos in heaven. Hey! So we're not talking about life in heaven, although that is a part of it. I can show you other scriptures, but right here we're talking about chronos has to do with three dimensions, past, present, and future. God's cause for God so loved. What makes God God? Love. Love makes God God. God's cause for God so loved the world, he, it was so consuming. That he mandated the cost would be eternal in this realm. I'm just talking about this realm. Yes, when we have Jesus and we die and we go to see him. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not talking about that right now. Because there's a whole lot of things going on. And people are boxed in. And they're separated, and they're not healthy, and they they don't they don't have what they need to live in this life. God paid that cost to cover all the connections to defeat, and those connections are gonna be cut today because this is Resurrection Sunday. So we are cutting those connections uh, to defeat and to disappointment and to insignificance and that feeling that I just love God, but I just want to give up. And we're going to hook up to a supply of redemption, which is what all that is right there. Because of the cost, because of the cause, the thing that makes God God is love. So our past can be restored. And sometimes it's our past that can haunt us, just like Deanne was talking about. Your present can be, you can just be renewed in your, in your, in your present. Because sometimes we just get worn out in our present, just surviving and then our future can be revealed because if you got a past that you can't get over and you got a present that's exhausting you certainly have no revelation of a future in fact if that's what it is uh no thanks for god so loved the world that he gave his son but there's but there's more to it for God so loved the world. So the operative word there is uh, world. For God so loved the world. I'm talking about God. I'm talking about the cause of God. I'm talking about the cost that God paid. I'm talking love is what makes God God. What does he love? It says clearly, for God so loved the world. World there means cosmos. I thought he just loved me. He does love me, but he loves the earth, and he loves the universe, and he loves the systems, and he loves government, and he loves education, and he loves the church, and he loves the atmosphere, and he loves the weather. He loves the cosmos, and he doesn't even have to go outside of God's order and design to get anything. He built it into his cosmos, and he said, I love it. But here's what God limited 
And it seems like an oxymoron because we know that God, with God, everything is possible, but he's limited himself to this. He says, I got to find a person. I got to find somebody that my love can manifest in the world that I love. I got to do that. He wants the world to be redeemed. He wants the systems, the industries, the governments, all of that. He wants all of that to be redeemed. He wants to heal the world of cancer. He wants to heal the world of disease and poverty and hatred and greed and loss because he loves the world. He wants to give a cure for every effect of evil in the world. And we have never been so aware. If you watch the news for five minutes, you are more aware of evil in the earth than you ever have. And God says, I love the world and I'm looking for somebody. Would you go? Would you go? Would you be somebody who would go into the earth? The cure for every effect of evil will come through you and I. It'll come through humanity. For God so loved the world. So I was thinking about this. God looked for somebody. He found the Wright brothers. And they invented and built uh, an airplane. Why? Because flying gets the aid, gets the gospel, gets the help, gets the resources. Barbara McLaughlin could not have gone to Ukraine without flying. Or it would have taken her a long time to get there. And they needed some, the crisis and the response to the crisis was met because God found somebody who would be a part of a flying uh, machine. So God moves on people to events. So we have lights here because God, I just choose to believe that God, because of his for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would have life eternal. God moved on people to invent light bulbs and, and phones and internet and everything good and helpful in the world. God moved through somebody. Tell your neighbor, move through me, God. He moved through somebody to get it into the world. For God so loved the world is the genesis for the biblical worldview. And let me tell you what that means. And Deanne can teach for two hours on that. And it's amazing. But I'm just going to say this. When you have a biblical worldview based on the word. Let me just say it like that. When you live based on the word, your perception changes. Because of the love of God, because of 1 Corinthians 13, because of 1 Peter, because of all those things, your perception of nations, of people groups, of people, it changes. Your response, because you are moved on by the word of God, that is your world view. You respond to circumstances uh, differently. What we say changes, what we think changes, what we believe changes, what we receive then changes. So here's how you tell whether you got a biblical worldview or not. If you don't have a biblical worldview, and I just know this because I know me. And so I'm watching the news, Jeff, and I'm on there for about 15 minutes, and then I read a bazillion articles that I get sent to me on a daily uh, basis on all the corruption that's going on in America and the entire world, and all of a sudden this world that God loves and paid the ultimate price for is too evil for him to redeem. What? Thank you. So we view the world based on the word and it doesn't matter. Now I'm not talking about hiding our head in the sand and saying that isn't real. I'm not talking about that. Death is real. Destruction is real. I'm, I'm not saying that. But 
it won't matter. It doesn't matter how corrupt it is. I am not going to be put into a tailspin or depression or hopelessness because God said, I love the world and I'm putting my plan in place. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And that becomes a weapon for the biblical worldview and our belief system. How we think. What we say. That's all about life eternal. That's about our past and our present and our future. So because of all that, because I'm living life eternal, for God so loved the world, the thing that makes God God is love. I can let go of that negative spirit. I can let go of the frustration. I can let go of judgment. I can let go of fear. I can let go of unbelief. And the reason that I want to let it go is if I believe a thing, I become a product of the thing I believe. That's right. When you believe God, you take on the nature of God. When you trust God, it produces a confidence in us that we need during times like we're living right now. Times of transition, times of season changes, and yes, times of war. When we master the battle, and there is a battle, when we master the battle that comes as a result of the tension between what the word of God says and our present reality, that thing that we see out there that touches us, touches our emotions. Oh my gosh. I mean, Deanne was telling me of some things that she had seen. And so that there is a battle and there's a tension. I, I know what the word says. I know what the word says I have and I can do and, and that our world could be. And then, and then we look out and we see this reality. But when we master that battle and, and that, that victor's crown, I'm wearing that. I'm wearing that. The only reason I can wear it is because he, he wears it. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm all that. I'm just saying that victor's crown. So, it, so I just read, I was telling Deanne yesterday, I just decided I would just read those last three or four days of Jesus, the one who's got the crown on, the one who's up from the grave. I just thought I would, I just thought I would read about his last few days. On, and listen, I want to tell you something that helped the tension die. He went through that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son and his hun. son had to, had to walk that out. And his father had to watch him walk it out. So what did Jesus go through those last three or four days? That last, that last week, the last week that we have just had. The passion of the Christ. He was betrayed. Don't you just hate that when you feel like you're betrayed? When you feel like you're slandered, when you feel like people have an opinion of you and it's not even the right uh, opinion or whatever. He was betrayed. He was arrested. And then there, there's a custom that they had. And, you know, we've all got customs. We've all got cultures that we deal with. And there was a custom that they had that they were going to put two criminals out there and they were going to let one of them go. Jesus wasn't a criminal. He didn't do anything that they were accusing him of. But Barabbas was. And they said, let him go. And then they beat up Jesus. And I, I just thought maybe a couple beat him up. But, but when, you, when you read that and you look up some of those words, you find out that there were 300 soldiers that beat up Jesus. And Isaiah prophesied in his uh, book in chapter 53 where it says that they beat Jesus up beyond recognition and he was an object of horror for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And his only begotten son walked that out. He was an object of where he was taking care of our life eternal. He was taking care of it right there. 
And at one point in the ordeal, the Bible says, when they beat him and they and then nailed him to the cross and they brought that cross up there and, and stood it up, it says that people were watching him. And after watching him go through everything that he had gone through for three or four days, they concluded that he was the son of God. And so, you know, this is why we live our life out in front of people because they're watching us. And they're watching us go through the things that we go through, Deanne. You know, so we, we feel like, does anybody see? Does anybody? Well, they are. They're watching us go through. And I just, I just said, God, I, I want the impact to be the same when they see me that they thought when they saw you bearing up under all of the heat. He, he, he is the son of God. And then you have in Hebrews, who for the joy that was set before yeah. him, he endured the cross. Jesus obviously looked ahead and it brought him such joy and such strength that he could go to the cross. And here's, here's what I love. Maybe he saw himself going into hell and getting the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Maybe he saw the birth of the church after he left. Maybe he saw Peter and John healing at the gate beautiful. Maybe he saw Peter's shadow healing. Maybe he saw the first 4,000 people uh, get saved after he had uh, left. Maybe he saw you and I believing for revival against all odds, for re restoration against all odds in a culture that absolutely contradicts yeah. all of that. Yeah. Maybe he looked ahead and said, you know what, it's worth it. He saw God's original mandate for mankind established in the earth again. And another place in Matthew 27, and mostly that's where I read, I, I like Matthew's uh, writings of those last three or four days. And it was a sign that his, his life was whole because it says that he yelled out. In a, he cried out with a loud voice. And I was just thinking about this, Deanne, and I know it was true with your mom too. Uh, too. When, when, when we know that they're, they're going to pass from this life to this life, we would have to get closer to mom and closer to mom to hear what she had to say because it was the doctor said, well, her, her voice will be the, the first to go because there's no air to push out any kind of volume, but that wasn't the way it was with Jesus. It said he cried with a loud uh, voice. He, before he died, he spoke as a man with full strength. He showed that his life wasn't being forced from him. His life wasn't being taken from him. Yes, they beat him. Yes, they hung on that cross, but he was saying, I give my life. The loud, and here's what the loud voice did, and I love this as I, as I read it and as I thought about that song, I, I had that song on my mind before I ever got here. That loud voice attacked his spiritual enemies, his spiritual enemies, and he did it with courage. The Bible says he spoiled his principalities and powers, all of them, what they all knew. He was slain before the foundations of the earth. Those were his principalities and powers that was coming against what he was about to do. He was spoiling principalities and powers right from the cross so that you and I can pick up our cross and do that from any circumstance that we go through. And here's what he's saying. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to get the keys. You can torture my body, but you can't stop my voice. He burst through the door. He burst through the door. He burst through the door of death. 
And he took those keys. And it's clear what he said. Death, where's your victory? Grave, where's your sting? That's the voice of a king who wears a victor's crown. And there was a, a great teacher, and here's what he said. Because of that, I'm redeemed by the blood of the land out of the hands of the enemy. He is risen. He is risen. 